I've stared at these boats for 35 years. I see them every day out on the water. These ships are landmarks and they've always been here. They've, they're part of Powell River, they're part of the BC coast. Nothing else like it. Whenever you come up to Powell River, whether it's a boat or a plane or anything, that's kind of the first thing you notice is these huge warships sitting outside of the mill. That's a Second World War ship built out of concrete because steel was scarce. These uh, ships have had a very, very long history as breakwater ships, uh, well over 50 years. They're tilted on their sides purposefully so that uh, they take as much energy of the ocean as possible. Daisy chain together, they've been a very, very effective breakwater for the mill in protecting their, their log pond. The capacity for the mill has uh, been reduced, so uh, the use of these concrete ships is really coming to an end. And uh, so they want to do something, uh, make sure that these ships are not going down uh, by accident. It's a liability I need to figure out a solution for. Because, you know, whether it's this year, next year, the year after, these boats are, are aging. They're costing more and more to keep afloat, and almost losing one in that storm was a, a, an eye-opening experience for us. So we have to do something. It's broken free and it's pulled its anchors and it's done many things that cost a lot of money to keep it sitting where it is now. Every time that we have more problems, waves bash the sides, eventually break down the concrete, they put cracks in it and then uh, we end up spending a lot of money just keeping these things afloat. They're really useless to us so we're really just keeping them alive for nothing. The, which, the majority of these ships are 336 feet long. That sounds right. More or less, I think. Uh, the, the Peralta, I believe, is over 400. She's the biggest. The ship right here that we're standing beside is the oldest one. It's actually been in the ocean for 94 years. I don't think there's very many ships on planet Earth that are still floating that are 94 years old. So it, uh, it's a testament to the the construction of these ships, they're amazing. The last World War II concrete ship anywhere on the planet is still floating. And uh, so, yeah, there's history here. And uh, th this ship is going to live on for the next 150, 200 years underwater. It's just interesting. It's just fascinating. It's just, it's just giant, giant holes. It's, you know Cape Breton, twice Cape Breton. In there. Oh. That was fast. That was amazing. And it's perfectly upright. That's the great thing about it. It looked like it was going over its side, but it didn't. So the charges went off without a hitch. We got ourselves a world-class shipwreck. there is. Wow! This is the 442 footer. Check this out. Holy cow! This one's got super diveability. We're wildly excited about the opportunity that they bring. Uh, divers like novelty and these ships will provide that. I mean we're, we're already thinking of what the dive paths are going to be and we haven't been on board for more than 10 minutes. You know? This is tremendous. I have never set foot on this boat before. This, this ship is a lot bigger than I imagined. A lot bigger. There's a lot more things to this boat than I imagined, and it's in rougher shape than I imagined. Devastation and age and rust and the stories that this ship could tell. Well, this ship is the quartz. Not only are we looking at a historic uh, concrete vessel, but one that actually participated during a nuclear test event back in the 40s. 
Once again, Bikini Atoll becomes the scene of the most dramatic nuclear explosion of all. And the force of a million tons of TNT is released. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, survived Bikini Atoll and survived uh, as a breakwater for all these years. And now uh, it's going to continue its, its, uh, its life as an artificial reef. Everyone used to come here diving, like uh, partly back in the day, Jack Cousteau used to come here, it was one of his favourite dive sites between here and Campbell River, he called it the Emerald Sea. It used to be the dive capital of BC and this, this will make it happen again. We'll, we'll pinpoint the location for the Yogan by putting a floats bow and stern within that box. Yeah. Uh, so we're at 75 feet here. go out on a straight line to 100, 105 maximum. What we need to get is at least 400 feet. I guess. Done, get in the water. The pool is open. <laughs> wow. We've got uh, four divers in the water uh, checking out the, uh, the terrain. What we're doing is we're trying to find a, a sort of the sweet spot suitable for these large ships. It's hmm. a, a great place for them to be, a very short distance from where they currently exist to where they're going to end up resting, and I really like that. I think there's a sort of a poetic justice to it. I, I have never heard anybody say, that's a ridiculous idea. A lot of people I've heard over the years, ah, sink them, just sink them. So why are they still floating? Sink them. We've been hired here by Catalyst Paper to do an underwater inspection and videotape of four of the hulks here, just to show how much sea life and how much growth is actually on the bottom of these ships. And from what we've seen so far, the minute you're one foot underwater here, there's a vast amount of sea life on these ships. There's generations of barnacles and tube worms on here. You could be looking at a, a natural reef. No one would consider this was actually on a, on a floating concrete vessel. Yeah, Tom, we're out here on the Yogan. And we are uh, going into a confined space here. With that's going to corrode very quickly. So I would say that that should come out. They will be unlike anything else we've sunk in the province. Uh, we've been very successful in sinking large military ships of uh, high-grade quality materials. We sank a Boeing 737. But we've never embarked on sinking four large concrete ships of uh, World War I and World War II vintage. So this presents a whole new challenge to us. So you've got to be really gentle. It's like an eggshell. small step for the project but psychologically huge because you know these have been here for 40 or 50 years and now one of them's gone. It's gonna sink eventually, we might as well sink it where we want it, right? Flip a little bit on the bow line, just a little tiny bit. Just 
That's that's good. Just hold it there now. 